So in discussing narcissism, um, I want to go through some personality traits and I'll allow you to kind of expound on them because I'm sure you'll be able to identify with a lot of them. We've got grandiosity and attention seeking behavior. So you kind of already talked about that a little bit in the ministry component, but just in your experience with dealing with these personality types, do they always seem to be um, bigger, larger than life, or they always have to be the center of attention? Like, do you have anything you want to add to that personality trait? Um, Because what we're going to do, ideally, is we're going to examine probably not all of these, but most of these from a biblical perspective. Um, we want to go to the scriptures to see what the text has to say, but grandiosity and attention seeking behavior, and then two, excessively looking to others for regulation of self esteem. Do you have any thoughts on those two? Yes. Um, um, when I, we, we, I come from a senior pastor. Uh, background okay. dynamic instead of a plurality of elders. yes, okay. and as I began to study the scriptures and I fell upon uh, the plurality of elders, I thought that is one of the problems of where I come from. And I mm. had a friend of mine said a coin a term called senior pastor syndrome. My friend who coined that phrase, senior pastor syndrome, um, dealt. Uh, as a as an assistant pastor mm-hmm. on several occasions where the his boss would be the senior pastor, so there was no equality. Um, so there was a hierarchy. There was a hierarchy. Okay. Uh, when he would, the senior pastor would step in mm-hmm. and just uh, assume uh, authority uh, and what the, the rules were thrown out the window. Really? And 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 just do what he thought was best, and in, and and usually would do what was best in his interest, the senior pastors, mm-hmm. and usually under the umbrella of the cause of Christ. Right. Okay. So was there some manipulation there in order to get that done? Because I would think you'd have to manipulate a little bit in order to. How are you going to convince this assistant pastor that this is for the cause of Christ? And I'm like, you just violated. Some laws. Oh, well, you intimidate. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, so intimidation. Absolutely. Okay. Intimidation and manipulation. Well, that's that's on here. That's one of my personality traits that the typical narcissist will employ. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, definitely the manipulation. Um, what about this? Superficial relationships. Only those that agree. Relationships are transactional. So what's meant by that, whereas the relationships that typically the narcissists have, they're not built on anything solid. It's just what I can get from you. Absolutely. And it's only when you agree, because when you disagree, now you're my enemy and now I have to treat you as such. Yeah. So to, to, to take the first half of that, um, one of the things that drove me crazy mm-hmm. uh, and I knew presented a weakness in uh, the the American ministry model was the fact that if I'm visiting somebody or um, that, that it was always hanging over uh, my head, what can this person do for us? Um, really? Yeah, because you have budget restraints, okay. you have administration needs, and and I did not. I did not go to Bible college and and sense this desire to be in ministry because I cared about money or buildings or any type of administration. Right now, I'm a I'm a I'm a decent administrator. Mm-hmm. I have decent managerial skills, but I really couldn't I couldn't care less about them or those things. Right, I cared about the people. Okay, and so you know when I got called at midnight because someone's daughter fill in the blanks. Uh, you know, I was there, mm. but the idea that I had this meeting the next day with a banker, well, tell the banker, I'll go see him some other time. Right. I really <laughs> just didn't care about that type of thing. So there was a constant pull between administration and what I called ministry. Right. So True shepherding. Yeah. So when I began to learn, for example, about the, the home church, mm-hmm. uh, I was so attracted to that because I thought, let's just flush all this down the 
toilet, but right. I don't even read about it in the scriptures. Right. All this administration. administration and I, I would have some mentors and friends try to explain to me how to raise money and how to do this. And I would talk to them about people problems and they would talk, uh, you know, I'm in this movement now. Right. And they would explain to me about all the bad people in their church and, oh, I've got this guy and, oh, I've got that guy. And then they asked me to preach with them at a conference and I couldn't help but let it slip out about preachers who are always talking bad about people in their church. And so I kind of called them a car, but because I didn't care about conferences. I've never been a preacher's preacher. Right. I wanted to be with my people. people. Because that harkened back in my mind to this running roughshod, mm. right? Jacob did not run roughshod when he was uh, uh, heading to the promised land right. with his young fold. Yeah. And um, so um, I don't know if that really. No, it's, it's fine. But I, can we digress just for a moment yes. to the plurality of elders? Yes, we can. So I began to understand the plurality of elders. And I, I, I really like that because uh, that to me was the cure for the senior pastor syndrome. Okay. And it also took the entertainment preacher out of his rhythm. Mm, Cause it's like, he can't be the star. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So I've got my six week, uh, sermon series, mm -hmm. and I got this rolling. Right. But all of a sudden, two weeks in, another elder's going to preach for a couple of weeks. Right. And then another elder. So it takes me out of my rhythm. I got you. And so that's another reason why I was attracted to that. And I believe it's biblical. Yeah. And I believe, again, it's another safeguard. To keep you humble. And, the, and one more thing. Someone asked me recently, they said, how would you feel about, uh, um, uh, eldering a flock, you know, by yourself and maybe having some good men. And they were just talking about growth and all that. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm 100% against it. They said, right. why not? I said, the same reason that many uh, former alcoholics don't want to go to a bar. Bar. They're like, it's too tempting. So basically, in this argument, you're making the plurality of elders is a shield against having, you said, the pastor superstar syndrome, because typically in environments like that, there's a huge avoidance of accountability. Whereas with the plurality of elders, you can't really do whatever you want. You can't be the one man show. You're submitted to one another and y'all have to talk over and discuss those things. So I can see how that's a safeguard because avoids accountability is one of the personality traits of the narcissist. It's like kryptonite. Like, oh, no, no, no. The moment you want to hold them accountable, it becomes very problematic. And gridlock is a dirty word today. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, right. They're always mm -hmm. talking about, gridlock is not a bad thing. It's not. Sometimes, a lot of times, because of our depravity, by the way, which... How do you remain a narcissist? I do not understand. Mm -hmm. And preach total depravity. That's good. But aside from that, gridlock is a good thing. It keeps us in our uh, flesh, mm -hmm. slows us down. It does. And it forces us to think. Right. So having a plurality of elders. One elder can say to another, okay, it's your turn, or brother, you know, I love you, but I, I would like for you to think about this and so forth, and uh, it is a good thing. So would you argue that a person that is narcissistic or narcissistic leaning, they don't thrive well in that type of environment? I, I can't argue that. I would think they would thrive well. Really? But, well, the point is so that... Are we talking about they're born again? Because here's my argument. If you are truly born again, I don't see how, because I've got a long list of traits. Sure. I don't see how those can flourish in the life of a believer. Well, it seems to me then, okay, make th those, those traits, that person doesn't, th those traits don't flourish in the life of a believer? Meaning, Agreed. If, if you're no Agreed. more for all of these negative traits Agreed. versus fruit of the spirit, it's just like something's off there. Agreed. My point is that the narcissist is not flourishing well 
in these uh, the uh, um, what would we call it? The, the pastor right. syndrome. Group. Right. They're not flourishing well there. Of course. They think they are. But they're a train wreck there. There. I'm saying they would flourish well mm -hmm. in a plurality of elders. They wouldn't flourish well in the senior pastor position. Right. They think they are. They think. Hey, I got a thousand people. Mm -hmm. No. You already said you're not flourishing well because you just used the term, I've got yes. a thousand people. Boom, you're done. So <laughs> they, they would flourish well here, mm -hmm. even though they may not recognize it as flourishing well because they've got the wrong idea of what flourishing well means. So I say they would because they need gridlock in their life. But typically, the narcissist avoids accountability, so they're going to run from the plurality of elders, or they'll fake it for a while, but eventually it's going to come to naught. Possibly, or right. likely. Yeah, likely. That's likely true. But the, 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 the optimism and the prayerful hope mm -hmm. is that having these loving brothers around them, that God grants them humility right. and grace, and they understand that's, you know. Gotcha. Let's discuss impaired empathy. Typically unable to identify with the intrinsic needs of others, a callousness toward the suffering of others. Um, in the pastoral shepherd relationship, I am struggling with this one because to be a shepherd, you have to have empathy. You have to be able to identify with the intrinsic needs of others. And you can't be callous toward the suffering of others. But in the narcissistic paradigm, you see this a lot. They literally are unable. It's, it's it's a cold, hard callousness. Um, I've seen it on display. Do you have any input about that? Yeah, leave follower get out of the way. Right. Does not does not leave room for compassion. It doesn't. Okay. Okay. So read. Right. So if you're goal driven, mm -hmm. right? I've got a goal here. So whether the goal is a uh, is it, 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 generally the goal is in, in some way numerical. Right. Whether it's finances, it's buildings, uh, attendance, baptisms, whatever it's just we more brought up, more. whatever. Yeah, it's always more because it's never enough. So whatever that is, you know, it's covetousness. Maybe it is absolutely okay. But uh, regardless, if you're not going to be with those numbers, I have no compassion for you. Oh wow! I mean, I don't have time. Yeah, yeah. There's I'm never not. enough time, and there's never enough numbers. So how do I have time for you? Got it. Okay. What about the hunger for appreciation or admiration, meaning will actively manipulate others to solicit or coerce admiration from them? Self-promoting, self-aggrandizing <laughs> statements, <Aggrandizing>. aggrandizing statements <laughs> and attempt to solicit regard and compliments from those around them. Now, obviously, like I said, I come from um, it's a hybrid, charismatic, Baptocostal faith tradition. But in that environment, it's a heavy emphasis on, hello, somebody. Uh, am I preaching to myself? Y'all quiet in here. Now, I'm not saying that people who do that are narcissistic. No, because sometimes right. people literally are asleep. Absolutely. And you're trying to wake them up because you're like, I'm preaching my heart out here and y'all are dozing off. But what I am talking about is an overemphasis on the self-promoting. Meaning, when I pull up to the church on the marquee, it's like your picture there, then the name of the church. Like, hey, when I see that, I'm like, what kind of <laughs> foolishness are you just all about you, huh, homie? So, so let me tell you something. So we had our track mm -hmm. of the Roman road inside. Mm -hmm. On the front, Dr. Chris Brown, my picture. And oh, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> and so people, and I remember... Here. I remember people handed out. I remember being there one time and somebody saying, why do I care who the pastor is? And that hit me one time going, yeah, why do you care? Thank you. I know. And all of a sudden I realized, why do we even put that on there? Yeah. And I thought, because our pastor did it. And then I started realizing, sort of like a pyramid, Everybody in that group, we all did it as he did it. And every church I visited had it like that. So that's why we do it. So I remember I went back and um, I had the secretary take it off mm -hmm. and just had the name of the church and the address because I thought that is a bit 
It was but, too much. Yeah, but. it was a bit egotistical. Why they don't care? And right. why should we care? It's about Jesus. It should be. We should be making much of Christ. <laughs> but for the narcissist, they're unable to do that. Or they can fake it a little bit, but it always comes out. And hear me clearly. When we're talking about narcissism, we're not... Everyone who's a fallen son and daughter of Adam, I would argue, has a little bit of narcissism in them because self-preservation it's it's our thing. I mean, if you think about when Adam and Eve got, you know, when God's calling them, they're grabbing leaves, they're coming. It was self-preservation. Oh, I know I'm wrong. Let me protect myself. So that's different. I know what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about this is an extreme level of self-centeredness to the point where it's damaging and it's abusive and it's causing problems in basic relationships. And we're we're gonna talk about that some more. What about antagonistic? Well, let's 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 remember that there's a spectrum here. Yes, and it's a spectrum of pride. Oh, and every because of because of our depravity, pride manifests itself in different ways. Right. So the person who the lost person um, who is manifesting their pride in a false humility, which is, I think, what you were referencing yes. here, um, is doing so for a different type of attention. Right. They're still doing it for their own benefit, benefit. But the person that they're harming generally, okay, that they're abusing, is themselves. Hmm. But they're doing it once again for their own benefit. So they'll harm themselves, they'll beat themselves down, and then the pity party mm. is, is, is in their eyes going to benefit themselves. So on the opposite end of that spectrum is the narcissist, right? right. But they, they might at times use false humility as well, mm -hmm. but they're more aggrandizing and so right. forth. And so, yes, every time a lost person does anything, whether they're expressing love, whatever it may be, it is ultimately for their own benefit. Right. Because only a saved person can express the love of God mm -hmm. because of the spirit of God within mm -hmm. them. So, yes, Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. all the way down to all of us because we we have that uh, fallen nature within us. So I just wanted to say that, yeah, I know you're, you're not... You, you're trying to dif differentiate between that narcissist right. um, who is... Overt, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, stomps on you. So what was the exact trait again? Um, it was antagonistic. Right. So that's that's a negative. Well, he's all negative. Positive. So again, okay, so here's that person. They're going for that goal. Mm -hmm. And you talked about attention. So the picture's up on the sign. Of course I want praise and honor. Why? I'm living my life for this, for the, that attention anyway. Mm -hmm. So along the way, I want some praise and glory. I'm doing this for praise and glory Anyway, am I antagonistic? Of sure I'm antagonistic. Somebody is giving me a hard time along the way. I'm, they're threatening. I'm, I'm you're setting up underneath the basket for what purpose? To make a basket. Right. If you're in the way, I'm going to throw elbows. Wow. And they do that because they lack the empathy. It's not like, oh my goodness, I didn't see you right here. I'm so sorry. It's like, no, you got to move because I'm... I'm on a mission. I'm trying to do so. It's basically the idea of I don't care who I hurt along the way because I'm focused on my goal. Do you think Shaq cared about who he was hurting? Shaq, Shaq would say when it came to big man, men, he was not uh, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah. putting up that beautiful sky hook right. that just floated over everybody. He's like, he was going to come in with that big body and he was going to try to get, knock you out of the way and, mo and at, you know, at some point, you know, 75% of the people in the league just got out of the way. Yeah, right. They're like, I'm, I'm good. That's interesting. Okay, so right after that, I have frequently respond in anger and resentment when they feel threatened by others. So that, that to me, it's like you have a very short fuse and, and vividly we're supposed to be, um, angry, but sin not, slow to speak, 
Um, you know, be quick to listen. So if you're frequently responding in anger and resentment when you feel threatened by others, what do you make, not what necessarily what do you make of that, but um, what commentary would you add to that? So I told you in the beginning that initially uh, my training was done by a covert narcissist. Right. And generally, uh, he expressed biblical traits. Okay, generally. Generally. Okay. I mean, there were times when he lost it. Right. But the 2.0 mm-hmm. was overt. Oh. Rarely was there patience. Right. Cause of Christ, man of God, on a mission. But look at all of the destruction. Along Get thee the behind way. me, Satan. Satan? Oh, wow. How dare you challenge, um, you know, uh, Elisha. Uh, get those bears are coming out of the woods to devour you young children for, you know, calling down fire. Right. All of it. Those, Just making up stuff. Those are, well, those are the texts. <laughs> so the, that's the biblical language yeah. that's used to cloak their abusive behavior and sinful attitude. And then all of a sudden a sermon on how Jesus rebukes. James and John for wanting to call down fire. Right. And then a twisting of the text of how people are mad at the pastor for something. And look how Jesus says, no, we're not supposed to act that way. And now let's, let's all be kind to one another. So gaslighting, gaslighting and manipulation from the pulpit. Man, you get tennis neck. Right. Stuff, that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. But the manipulation is, is so much there. So, so, uh, yeah, yeah, constant. That's there. Intolerant of disagreement or questions. How dare you question me? Do you know who I am? It's that kind of, uh, and I've had experience experiences with this, um, and it almost makes you on edge when you are the recipient of this type of narcissistic behavior. You're like, you know what? To to protect yourself, you're like. You're always walking on eggshells or you, or you handle the person with kid gloves because you don't know what's going to set them off. Um, and you already know if I disagree, this is something my husband always says, you got to cancel Christmas because <laughs> at that point, the intolerance kicks in. They're intolerant of disagreement or questions, yet they are always the ones that will demand when they ask you a question they demand a response right and i think that has a lot to do uh with the fact that they are so consumed with themselves and their mission right okay. remember um that their mission is 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 so important and right? we're talking in the christian context right sure okay whatever context remember that triangle they're trying to. That's the drama triangle that yeah. he continues to reference. Yeah, they're 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 rescuing. You don't understand. I mean, I'm about to I'm about to uh, attack this castle and mm-hmm. save the damsel in distress. Right. And you're over here asking me what? <laughs> you're over here asking me did I give the horse enough oats? Are you kidding me? The damsel is in distress, distress. and you want to know what about a horse? Who cares about a horse? PETA is just bringing up dumb stuff. Stop listening to them. Are you kidding me? Let me get on with my mission. If you think you know so much about the Bible, we'll raise an offer of a dollar ninety-eight and send you off to Bible college. Sit your hearing down and let me praise God. I've heard that kind of preaching from the pulpit. I was a part of that kind of preaching. No. May not have sounded just like that, right, but I'm but just letting you know that I understand the cadence, I understand yeah. the language, and I just wanted to emulate it for you for a moment. You did great to let you know it's out there, right? But it's hurtful. It is hurtful, but again, you're so you 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 think I've got to put this fire out mm-hmm. so that I can get on. Listen, my mission. Listen, we what what did that one preacher used to say? We are keeping people out of hell. You. We are Y'all. keeping people. Out. We are keeping people out of hell, and you care about whether or not I got something right in a sermon three 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 months ago. 
We're keeping people out of hell. And you are worried about what a deacon did. Mm-hmm. And I didn't fix that. You don't, that's none of your business. Stay in your lane. We're keeping people out of hell. Wow. See? Wow. All right. We have outwardly arrogant, but deep inside, they are very <laughs> fragile. Absolutely. <sighs> it's a smoke screen again. So I they're think- not really. I remember we talked the other day and I said, you know, they, the narcissists believe they're the center of the universe. And you said they don't really believe that. No. And I was like, huh? No, no. Are you sure? No. Talk, talk, no. To, talk to us about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's like the little five-year-old girl in the corner. Um, she's a princess. Yes. It's a castle. Mm-hmm. There's a white knight coming. All of that. Right. And she's got her own make-believe little world. And it makes her feel like she's something that, in reality, she she's knows not. she's not. Oh, so she knows she's not. Of course she knows. Right. But she's got a daddy and a mama and sisters and brothers somewhere else. So she actually knows it. But for that, that time, mm-hmm. it, it's like a, it's like a drug addict when they get high. Right. Once the high's over, they know, but they're going to go back to it. Right. And so it's, it's a wonderful feeling. It is euphoric. And so it is, it is just so wonderful. And for the, for the narcissist, it is this wonderful, creation this this false reality right and they know they're not they know it's fragile as long as they can create that bubble and sustain that bubble each time each time that it is so comforting it is a it is a butterfly's cocoon it is warm and you are bursting my bubble so is that why they um what do you call it uh lash out when something threatens that bubble oh absolutely Hmm. There's so much fear. Uh, there's so much fragility. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. They they are weak. Um, they they know they're weak. Um, they don't admit it. Right. Because they don't want to tell themselves. So it's a it's a it, they're they're self deceived and they, they, there's that's where the fragility is. Okay. Okay. Um, they're 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 they are their own best cheerleader um, and they continue you know you know you see TV shows or movies where you've got this person constantly listening to tapes yes. and telling themselves how wonderful they are mm-hmm. well that's the, the difference between that person and the narcissist is they don't listen to the tapes they've got the tape running in their head on perpetual repeat. absolutely and so they've got that going and you step in and you're hitting the pause button on the tape and they so, mm, no. wow. So that leads into the fact that they lack a true identity. They don't know who they are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so people, people, I remember people visiting or I visit churches and my goodness, we'd say, you sound just like, and it'd be one of our mentors. So they're copying or oh. mirroring, they're creating this sense of self of who they really want to be because they don't have a true identity. Absolutely. Wow. It's interesting because for the believer, um, a good friend of mine is working on a book on the image of God in light of what we see. He he touched base not just on the whole um, LGBT, you know, perversion of the image of God, but just how so many of us, we have a distorted view of ourselves um, and then for the believer, it's like, well, if we're made in the image of God, we should be reflecting that. Someone who's born again should not be displaying. They shouldn't lack a true identity because their identity is hidden in Christ. So for the narcissist, would you agree that maybe they don't know who they are in Christ because regeneration hasn't happened? Well, that is a huge uh, possibility, if okay. not likelihood, that uh, a brother of mine, again, that used to be in heavy contact, and we were working ourselves out of this movement okay. that we discussed how that we do not, many of us, many of our peers, uh, do not realize who we are in Christ.